Abandoned at independence in 1963, amended 16 times in 15 years of presidency of Kenyatta Senior, or if you may like him, Jomo Kenyatta, the founding father. 14 times under President Daniel Toroitich Arap Moy's 24-year tenure as the President of the Republic of Kenya. I'm talking about the independence constitution. However, the clamor for a new constitution grew in the late 80s, leading to the repeal of Section 2A of then constitution making Kenya a multi-party democracy. 19 years later, Kenyans got what they yearned for, and Kenyatta Jr., if you may like him, President Uhuru Kenyatta became the first beneficiary with the utmost responsibility of respecting and upholding the principles of good governance in this document. Has he? We have an update. Also tonight, with the novel coronavirus from China to Europe, in Latin America and in the United States of America and in Africa, came a new normal. The government tonight claims that we may be flattening the COVID-19 curve. While that remains the utmost responsibility and the ultimate goal, what scientific evidence is advising the government that the infections are slowing? Our health affairs reporter, Winnie Lubembe, has that account. On News Compass tonight, it exactly is 3,650 days since we promulgated the 2010 Constitution. Ten years later, our political culture remains disfigured, corruption deep-rooted, soaring unemployment and skying rate of poverty in Kenya in the contemporary 21st century. This amid talks of amendments, implementation or amendment, which way the 2010 document. Kitu tunahitaji Kenya sio kubandilisha katiba ni msimamo wa uongozi ambao unaweza kusimamia mali ya wananchi wa Kenya. As we mark the 10 years since the promulgation of the new constitution, we have made strides and these strides cannot be taken back by the small teething problems that are there. But if Kenyans are not vigilant because this constitution empowers and enjoins Kenyans to actually protect it under uh, Article 3, if Kenyans are not vigilant, the gains they have made uh, uh, since the, 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 the new constitution was promulgated are likely to be to be taken away. But let us not go out for things like uh, the FBI, uh, we want to have a new constitution, we have to have, we need to, we, so that the country can be stable and so on. Much depends on the kind of people we have in the country. And we have the lineup for that discussion coming up after 9.30 here are uh, our panel. Professor Hezron Mogambi, lecturer at the University of Nairobi, commentator on social, political and governance development. Reverend Dr. Timothy Njoya, who championed the cause for multi-party in early 1990s. And Okia Omtata, who has a catalogue of cases petitioning the government and a champion of the 2010 constitution. Globally though, the COVID-19 numbers, the World Health Organization is now concerned about the United States of America, where despite the pandemic, it equally is shaping the November 3 elections was less than 70 days before Americans will elect the next commander in chief at the White House. Brazil, Ecuador, Venezuela and Peru remain a concern in Latin America. In Africa, the cloud appears to be not so much of concern to the WHO as is the case with the European continent, but there are resurgent cases of the pandemic in Hong Kong and parts of Asia. The cases now tally 24 million, 242,062. Of that, 827,165 have died with the virus. Good evening, day 27 of August 2020. I am Ayub Abdikadir Abdi. Our sign language interpreter tonight is Joyce Wairemo. Coming up in the next 30 minutes. The short SMS code 40920, the hashtag on Twitter, News Compass. As Kenyans celebrate 10 years since the promulgation of the 2010 constitution, the document is yet to be fully implemented. The executive arm of the government remains adamant in changing some aspects of the constitution in the form of the Building Bridges Initiative. Chief Justice David Maraga has this afternoon called on leaders to uphold the rule of law 
that has guided the land for the past 10 years or risk bending the country towards anarchy, as our reporter Abdelaziz Hashim tells us in the following report. Many refer to the moment as the rebirth of the country, as it ushered in a new dawn in the country, a dawn of the rule of the law. Despite the new constitution having its fair share of challenges over the years, the third arm of the government maintains that they have been on the right track to achieving some of the objectives set out by the 2010 constitution. The promulgation on 27th of August 2010 was the culmination of the struggle by the people of Kenya to constitute a new Kenya based on the essential values of human rights, equality, freedom, democracy, social justice, and the rule of law. Even as the country marks 10 years since the promulgation of the new constitution, the judiciary, true to form, has launched the alternative justice system policy to dispense justice for the citizenry. While recognizing this systemic bias, this ought not to be about competing structures and norms, but rather how we can better improve all practices of justice provision for a more just, equal, and equitable society. These people without access to justice are victims of the justice gap that characterizes many countries. As the UN recognizes in the report Justice for All, the justice gap is both a reflection of structural inequalities as well as a contributor to those inequalities. The policy which seeks to resolve disputes among the society instead of going to court. The policy comes at a time when the judiciary has maintained that they have backlog of cases that are yet to be cleared. And Chief Justice David Maraga time and time again has maintained that this has been necessitated by the lack of enough judges in the various courts around the country. No doubt whatsoever that if we embrace the way the communities go resolving their disputes and assist them where need be, we will go a long way in resolving several disputes, some of which end up in court and should not come to court. As many Kenyans yearn for the new constitution to be implemented as it is, it remains to be seen if the government would heed their calls despite talks of the country going for a referendum. Abdeziz Ashim, Ebru TV, from the Supreme Court of Kenya, Nairobi County. Kenya is certainly at the risk of developing a second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic if Kenyans relent on the fight against the contagion. In the daily COVID-19 update by the Health Ministry, Chief Administrative Secretary Dr. Rashid Amman said despite all the indications on the flattening of the curve being promising, a second wave is equally inevitable. This as 373 more people tested positive for the COVID-19 pandemic. Winnie Lubembe with more on the rising number of the virus. Flattening the COVID-19 curve, this is a statement on many Kenyans' lips with many hoping that this will be achieved soon. While many African countries have shown positivity rates coming down, this does not mean the war is over. If we stop doing the things we're doing, we are certainly going to get another peak and we don't know how high that peak will be. Kenya is no exception. We are within that peak. But this is not a time to loosen the measures that we have put in place. Health CAS Dr. Rashid Aman maintains that Kenyans should not let their guards down. As the country is getting closer to its COVID-19 peak, testing remains a problem as similar incidents globally. Also in the developed countries, it remains a challenge because of the demand, high demand for the commodities required for testing, the limited availability of these, which by the day is improving. However, with 500 COVID test kits donated to Kenya Medical Research Institute, 50,000 tests are set to be done. 115,269 or 50% have been done in the Camry laboratories using both manual and automated platforms for real-time PCR detection of the virus. However, Japan's ambassador to Kenya, Hori Ryoichi, had one message. We expect that these assistances will be utilized effectively by the Kenyan government and all the agencies uh, to help 
fight against COVID-19. So far, COVID-19 cases in the country stand at 33,389 after 373 people tested positive. All are Kenyans except th 13 that are foreigners. 273 of these 373 are males, 100 are females. The youngest is one month old infant and the oldest is 80 years. 72 others have recovered, raising the total recoveries to 19,368, while three others succumbed to the illness, pushing the number of fatalities to 567. Winnie Lubembe for Ebru TV. Elsewhere, Migori County Governor Zachary Okoth Obado and his four children will know their fate on Monday next week when their bail ruling will be delivered. Chief Magistrate Lawrence Mugambi this afternoon dismissed lawyer Kiyoko Kilukumi's application to release the accused pending their bail hearing. Busara Naman reports. Migori Governor Zachary Okoth Obado and his children, Susan Scarlett, Jerry Zachary, Evelina Diambo and Dan Achola Okoth were arraigned in court to answer to the graft charges before Chief Magistrate Lawrence Mugambi. They appeared alongside seven others. Obado and 15 others denied 28 counts relating to misappropriation of 73.4 million belonging to the county. It is alleged that being the governor, he held an indirect private interest in several contracts that paid money to his children's account. 2,322,100 115 was received by your son, Jerry Zachary Okot, from Jared Peter Odoyo or Lord Quagga on account of monies paid to companies by the Migori County Government. <coughs> Count number five, you have been charged with conflict of interest contrary to section 42, three, as read to section 48 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act 2003. 901,486 and 25 cents was received by Scarlett Susan. Not Obado, who is now serving second term in office, was separately charged with eight counts of conflict of interest for the different times that each of the children received money in their accounts from the county coffers. The governor has also denied a charge of money laundering. We have obtained sufficient evidence for this covenant. It is before court. There is no legal bar or prohibition for the prosecution to bring future charges in future. They have been remanded in custody pending bail application ruling on Monday 31st this month. According to the DPP, the governor indirectly received 73.4 million from companies that traded with the county government during his first term in office. DPP says the four children separately received 34 million from Obado's company and three brothers who acted as proxies in some of the farms that the county boss owned. The ESEC audit trail shows that the companies wired 38.9 million to three of the governor's children, which was used to pay their school fees, upkeep, maintenance, and medical bills in Australia, Scotland, and the United Kingdom. Busara Naman for Ebru TV. The Kenya Medical Supplies Authority, KEMSA, is at loss and so the disposal of 6.2 billion COVID-19 commodities stock, said to have lacked the market. KEMSA board chairperson Kembi Getura, while appearing before the Parliamentary Health Committee of the National Assembly, told members the lying stock was occasioned by President Uru Kenyatta's directive to counties to purchase the COVID-19 commodities from their place of choice. And as our political affairs reporter Jeff Khaimba tells us, KEMSA has denied corruption allegations, saying since the pandemic hit the country in March, they have only received $2.1 billion from the Minister of Health. That you have not paid. And, uh, had, had you Kemsa board chairperson Kembe Gitura on Thursday led his members at the Parliamentary Health Committee for grilling over the alleged COVID-19 pandemic fund, money that is said to have been pocketed by few individuals even as the pandemic continues to ravage the country. We, are, we have the stocks worth 6.2 billion shillings as of this morning in commodities that we have not been able to offload. 
Uh, Gitura told the Sabina Czech led committee uh, no money has been lost at the parastatal. Uh, however, they are likely to face a possible loss of 6.2 billion Kenyan shillings worth of a stock of COVID-19 commodities over lack of a market. That we purchased this PPE, personal, personal protective uh, equipment, we bought the face masks. The next thing, Madam Chair, you recall, His Excellency, Excellency the President opened a window for counter governments to buy from outside KEMSA. Uh, KEMSA is said to have purchased large quantities of the materials uh, before President Uru Kenyatta gave a directive uh, that dealt a huge blow uh, to them. It said KEMSA was buying N95 masks at 700 Kenyan shillings, the same mask that is now going for about 250 Kenyan shillings. The members of the health committee put to task KEMSA board over the price inflation of the commodities and even opting for indirect procurement of COVID-19 materials where it said some of the companies were favored during the award of the tenders. Did KEMSA during this time follow its normal procurement process? We did emergency procurement of the items because this is a pandemic. Some officers have been suspended also. Who suspended the officers? The board did. If there were no problem, I don't think the CEO was suspended. So, Chair, can you tell us the truth? I am not defending anybody. It is not in my interest to defend anybody. And I'm on record as saying that when the, the chips will have to fall where they may, and people will have to carry their own crosses. Nobody is going to carry anybody's cross. And that is why I've said I welcome ESCC to come to KEMSA and turn everything upside down, because if there are mistakes, they shall help us. The other matters Gitura was told to explain before the committee was about the board receiving instructions from the health principal secretary Susan Mochache on what to procure and the companies to be given the tenders. The head of the procurement at the facility said it's unlawful for Mochache to dictate what should be done. Nobody will carry anybody else's cross. The prices and the price differences are almost the same. Did we actually do a market price. I don't know whether I was trying to do a market survey on any of, the, on any of these items. We want to know why most of the companies that have been supplying cancer were denied tenders. Tell me that company you talk about which, is, which was uh, registered this year or last, or, or last month and we gave it to work and we are going, the, the procurement person is going to say why that was done. If there's something we're hiding, tell us what it is. Because it has been in public domain, and let me address myself to this company called Kings, where allegations have been in public that it is associated with someone who is very senior in government. It is true, a company called Kilig got a commitment letter to supply commodities to cancer. Worth so much money, I believe it was 4 million, 4 billion and 50 million shillings. But on 30th of June, the CEO, the then CEO, Dr. John Manjari, wrote to Kilig and informed them that that tender had been cancelled. A top officials at KEMSA management, led by John Manjari, were suspended on corruption allegations. On Friday, the Senate held a door committee as once again summoned a KEMSA board and their entire management to shed light about the expenditure of public funds. As investigations intensify at KEMSA over the possible loss of billion Kenyan shillings meant to fight the COVID-19 pandemic, officials at KEMSA have remained firm no single coin was lost. But the biggest headache is how they will have to dispose of the 6.2 billion Kenyan shillings stock that is yet to find in the market. Reporting for Ebro TV, I'm Jeff Haimba. Elsewhere, several people are feared dead and others injured after a lorry rammed into several cars at Dodori Shopping Center in Bahati constituency in Akuru County. According to eyewitnesses, the ill-fated lorry is alleged to have lost control and hit an electricity pole before ramming into 10 cars that were parked the roadside. More details of the deceased and those injured are still yet to be addressed. 
by the relevant authorities. Early this week, another grisly accident occurred at the Kaburengu Junction in Kakamega County after a lorry rammed into traders, leaving at least 10 people dead. Did the 12 member Senate committee reach an agreement over the contentious revenue sharing formula that continues to be a pain in the neck of the upper house? Well, it now appears that there was a smoke, only that it isn't white. Narrow County Senator Ledama Olekina now says the biggest bone of contention remains how the law losing counties will be willing to go about the matter. We have smoke in terms of the revenue share, but the smoke is it is not white. After days of hope that maybe the 12th member Senate committee could heal the pain in the neck that continues to dog the Senate, it is now apparent that the country will continue to be treated to hard stances and grandstanding. You know, where we have reached today, and uh, having sat in that committee of 12 for the last um, nine days, we were not able to agree. After it emerged that the dozen senators failed to agree on a way the 47 county governments will share the 316 billion shillings. So we say, you know what, we stand our ground because we want a proposition that will be able to see uh, counties develop. Not, one, not some counties developing and others not developing. And we are confident to say that uh, when we look at each other as one indivisible country, then a solution is nigh. This is after the Wednesday announcement that the team had unlocked the deadlock after a week of deliberation. But we want to assure Kenyans that the impasse that has been in the media and on everybody's lips is going to be something that will be resolved. Like right now, let me actually make it very simple. If I want, I want to take away that shirt from you, okay? And you don't have another shirt. See, I should add another shirt on top of that. So that's simple, you know. It is raining, I only have a shirt, I don't have, you want to take it away, you should give me a jacket. But according to Senator Ledama, that is far from the truth, as the biggest bone of contention remains how much the losing counties should give up to the more populous counties. You know, we came up with a, a proposition, which we call it option one, which ensured that the 316 billion if what a county got last year, continue getting until we're able to raise more money. But then our brothers from the other side, they said, no, we don't want that. We want to take what you've been getting, we want to be able to receive that money. So now we are not ahead. So we, we, I think it will end up having to go into a vote because we couldn't agree. The matter opening the lead on the high political stakes involved in the issue as the country gets into the 2022 election mode. My county of Narok was receiving 8 billion, received 8 billion last year. These guys now want to take a billion away from me. You know, how can I justify going back to Narok and telling the people of Narok, I've gone to the Senate to represent you, but now I'm bringing you 7 billion, not 8 billion. The 12th member team was formed last Monday after the Senate failed to reach a consensus in a record nine sittings. In the disputed formula proposed by the House Finance and Budget Committee, some 18 counties were set to lose some 17 billion shillings from their last year's allocation. As the country marks 10 years following the promulgation of the current constitution, a section of Nakuru residents want changes made on the governance and civic education part on the importance of the constitution in the country and what right it serves for the common monarchy. One of the biggest things that ever happened in this nation is devolution. What that means is that for the first time, Mwananchi on the ground is able to sit down and say they want a simple footbridge, they want a source of water, they want a road that has never been opened for 40 years, they want simple things, agriculture, you know, on health and all that. Eh? Now, we, we, before, 
we needed to depend on the central government to do plans through district focus for rural development to reach Wanjiku. It was going to take years. So it has revolutionized everything. Nakuru, for example, we have been able to, to, to drill over 250 boreholes. We have been able to open over, over 8,000 kilometers of roads and other things that have happened, including healthcare and others. Let us not uh, try to, to, to stifle devolution by talking about devolution, uh, corruption so much. Let us talk about the good that it has done. Yes, there is, there's an issue also of lack of capacity. Some county governments don't have the capacity to absorb funds, such that Wanjiku is asking for a borehole, but it will take about three years before they see the water. So what we need to be working on now is to strengthen that capacity in terms of county government to make sure absorption rate is very high, that there is no all of us, there is no money that goes to the other here. I'm going to say that the people who are going to increase 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 the people na mimi inamaanisha nini? Yaani kibadilishwa tujue tujue ni shughuli gani inaenda kufanyika, si kweli? After 10 years of this constitution, I would propose kwamba kila mtu sana sana katika shule kukue na syllabus ambayo inafundishana kuhusu nini? Katiba. Ndio watoto wetu kutoka mwanzo kutoka chini waelewe katiba na wajue kwamba huyu ameiba mali ya umma, anastahili kushtakiwa. Yule mwingine akaya kijua hii katiba inanipatia right ya maji inanipatia right ya education time for a quick break on the broadcast coming up the business update banana farmers in the county of Kisi have appealed to the county government to fast track completion of the local banana factory whose construction was commissioned one year ago the completion of the factory will enable according to the farmers the production and marketing in the county of Kisi <laughs> Markets around us, where the prices are not very pleasing. A bunch of bananas of about that two kilos sells about 200 to 300 shillings. We don't, we don't sell bananas by weight. We sell them by just looking at a bunch and then we discuss about the price. Market yetu, tunafanya, tunaifanya tu locally. Juu, unapata mtu wanakuja nyumbani, kama broka, wengine wanachukua keumbu, market, wengine wanachukua Nairobi. Mtu, instead ya kuuza ndisi, tuseme miatano ama miasaba, unapata ndisi, mtu wanakuambia miambili, juu anabeba. Mungine mtu wanambebea, unapata sasa hiyo ndizi, inakuwa beiduni. Uh, for the project to fast track and bring those uh, machines as early as possible, and also to increase the number of plantlets that we supply to these farmers so that we have uh, we increase the area under banana production such that when the machines start operating you get that we have enough to cater for the, the, the operation at that factory. The National Irrigation Authority will in the next fortnight know whether its request for 700 million shillings government funding to complete phase one of the Galana Kulalu food security project will be approved. What an irrigation CS Cecilia Karaoke says discussion on the request made by the authority are ongoing, but hinted that the authority could get the funds if satisfied with the work done so far. I want to assure us that already government has made a decision that with the materials already investment, with the technical contribution that has been made by the committee of PSAs, uh, my colleagues who've already visited this project, it is worth the while for us to ensure the 10,000 model farm becomes a reality and in totality. Moving forward, as and when we build consensus on how uh, the model farm can be turned into private hands, a decision in terms of opening other acres moving forward, including investment in additional water uh, through a dam, is a discussion that is in the pipeline and the discussions are yet to be concretized into the next phase of this project. Validate the request which the PSAs and the committee has already uh, put together and made recommendations for the additional investment to be made in this project. Uh, that conversation is at the point of discussion for eventual conclusion in the coming two weeks. Time for another break here on the broadcast. When we come back, sports.
Paul Pogba test positive for the pandemic. Chelsea, Mwaka's team. There is also the West London club affected by the pandemic and how the Black Lives Matter protests are not only shaping up the American politics ahead of the November elections, but sporting activities equally in the biggest economy in the world. After the break on the broadcast. Things come down on the primetime news. Coming up next, News Compass, Professor Hezron Mogambi, lecturer at the University of Nairobi, Reverend Dr. Timothy Njoya, who championed the cause for multi-party democracy in the early 1990s, of course, against the suppressive, brutal Kanu regime in the early years of the multi-party democracy in Kenya, and equally Okia Omtata was a catalogue of petitions against the government and the champion of the 2010 constitution in seeking accountability and its full implementation. The hashtag on Twitter, News Compass, the short SMS code 40920. We are back after the break here on the broadcast and on News Compass. Bye-bye.